Welcome to Crappens. Don't wait a week for a new video. Join our Patreon at the Crappens On Demand level for instant recap access. Link in description. Enjoy the show. Well, hello and welcome to What's With Crappens, the podcast for all that crap we love to talk about on Yale Bravs. I'm Ronnie. That is Ben over there. Hello, Ben. Hi, Ronnie. How are you? Good. Welcome to the Valley Recap. Yes. So exciting. The Valley, episode two. It's the Val, guys. Um, Super happy to be here. Super happy you're here, guys. Um, Hope you're there live with us at our small intimate gathering in L.A., our show that we're doing in L.A. in May uh, for Netflix, Comedy is a Joke Festival. And then also we're going to Europa for three cities, uh, Dublin, London, and Birmingham. The end of May, so come see that. We don't know what we're going to do there. Just think it's going to be no super idea. fun, though. Well, I can guarantee that. And today it is the Valley. We're on video on Patreon, so hi. You can watch a week later if you're not on Patreon for free on our YouTube. Just search for Watch What Crappens. There's tons That's of videos right. there. And if you want them right now, get on our Patreon. What are you waiting for? Okay. Yeah. So here we are with the Val. What you thinking, Ben? God, I really resent how much I'm enjoying this show. <laughs> oh, I have a huge apology to make. Huge, huge, huge apology. I think last week on the Valley uh, recap, I may have said something to the effect of like, I kind of feel bad for Brittany because she seems like a generally sweet person who's just sort of been, you know, like brought into this world with Jax and like she just made some bad. No, no, she's, she's a terrible sucks. person. She's Brittany terrible. Sucks. She's the downfall of society. And I had forgotten the downfall. I had forgotten that I had been I had been removed enough from her that I was uh, conned by her like her sweet presenting nature. But um, she's terrible. She's a terrible person. She so, is terrible. Uh, I apologize is... to everyone who had to listen to me actually say something complimentary towards this her. This is why she's terrible, because she acts nice and she fools people into thinking she's not yes. terrible. That was her whole thing. And when she really got me, and you know, I know a lot of the time it's like, well, it sucks that it took this, because there were so many other signs, like, for example, being with Jax. And does that mean... Being with a terrible partner makes you terrible? Yeah, kind of, because you're foisting that partner on the rest of us, you fucking mm -hmm. asshole. So yeah, you do have to think of other people when you choose a partner. Um, but um, it was that whole thing on their wedding and they got the homophobic priest and then she was like rolling her eyes and all pissed that anybody would even get mad at it. And that's the kind of fucking person. like smiling in your face and being all goofy like i have guy friends how could you say that i'm a god guy well you're sitting here supporting someone who is and then refusing to admit it when you're called out on it and just acting like the gays are so over dramatic now listen that's extremely old news i don't mean to be getting into gayness and all of that stuff but it just reminded me at gayness. the time of people who are like that, smiling in your face, like, I love you, but you're going to hell, which I grew up with my whole <laughs> life. And I, I just remember being so pissed off in that recap. I mean, shocker, I know. But I just remember getting so pissed, and I've never forgiven this twit because she's just the fucking same. And like I said before, not only is she a monster, and not only is Jax a monster, but they've Xeroxed themselves and put themselves back into the world. And to that I say, we have to stop this. I need, We need to start making licenses to have babies. You can't just, if I can't fucking drive a car until a certain age, why are you allowed to put a fucking human being into the world whenever you want? <laughs> Yeah, I think that's that's fair. There should be a standardized test. Um, <laughs> there should be. For so many things in life. You know, there should be a test for owning a gun, and there should be a test for having a baby. Okay? You have to be responsible. And babies okay? should be tested before they can own guns. <laughs> yes. I think that's probably the, the safest thing of all, is that a baby should not own a gun until they're tested. Yeah. Um, uh, but that being said, gosh, I was laughing. Every time Brittany was on screen, I just laughed because she is like a parody of herself, the way she talks. I mean, she really is like, <laughs> <laughs> she makes excuses for him. She's terrible. But, um, you told me last week, uh, about how, did you say it on the recap? Maybe you did about because of her plastic surgery, she has like a, uh, her face is like in a, stuck in a frown. It's like palsied <laughs> or something. Yeah, it's, she like apparently palsied she, it or something. Apparently she's out of it. Like she, I, re I read an article about it and she's like, well, the doctors thought it'd be fixed by the time I started filming, but we weren't ready yet. So I sort of had this frown the entire time. And you're probably watching like, why is she frowning so much? But guess what? Thank God. It's all fixed now. Thank God. Thank Jesus. 
So now apparently you're, it's you're, like now your frown is back to just it's natural because of Jack's <laughs> style. Dumbfounded. Yeah. Um it's like my life's choice has led me here, frown. But it does make me sort of giggle that like, wow, you were you were terrible in that the way you will go out of your way to make excuses for Jax and like enable his behavior. But your punishment is that you have to spend this whole season sort of frowning the entire time and trying to smile through this frown. And But it's also the fact that she it's not only that she apologizes for it because she does do that all the time, but she agrees with it. She just doesn't admit that she agrees with it. Yeah. And you get it. We get a little taste of that at the end of the episode yeah, today do. where you see how she really fucking feels, you know, and that's the problem. That's the problem yeah. with me. Now, is Brittany the worst on the show? Probably not. Um, I think she just angers me the most because, like like I said, she's the trickiest, you know? And someone like Jax, like, you know he's a piece of shit. He's so upfront about it. But it's the tricky ones like Brittany who will, who will fuck you up, you know? Mm. So here we go. My favorite thing to ever happen on this show. Oh, I owe some apologies, too. Um, it's not a state on his arm, Jesse's arm. Oh, I said yeah. he's got a state tattooed on his arm. It's not. It's a Pomeranian. Terrible just- tattoo. <laughs> It's just a strange outline of a Pomeranian, which turns out when out of context and at different angles, which is what will happen in a tattoo, looks sort of like a state or just kind of like a weird blotch. Well, I think I just saw the weird lines and thought, what the fuck could that be? I guess it's a state. Like, what else would it be? You know? Oh, and as long as we're apologizing for Jesse things, it turns out that no, Bunny is his daughter's middle name. After yes, all. that was my second apology. Sorry, everybody. Sounds good. We got a lot of responses about that tattoo and Bunny. I'm surprised that so many people were up on that. You never know what's the thing that's going to elicit a big audience well, it's response. It's just amazing that I can sit here and take notes for two and a half hours and still get basic things like that wrong, you know, and then argue about it. Like, no, Ben, that's not the truth. Here's what happened it's a state. And daughter's favorite animal is a bunny. Okay. <laughs> it's, uh, so, it's, I mean, look, I think you're forgiven for not realizing that tattoo is a Pomeranian because it just. Oh, thanks. Sorry, it does not read as a Pomeranian. You have to look at it as a specific way for it to be a Pomeranian. Any other way, it literally looks like the outline of a neighborhood. Also, those aren't arms that you have to stare at. You know what I mean? They're not. They're not arms that are like, oh, look at that arm. Oh, I need to see it's that again. And then, then like at. every time the arm comes on, you're like, I need to see that arm again. It's like you see it, and it's like, oh, bad tattoo, weak arm. Move on. You know. I'm not listen. Yeah. I'm not judging the weak arm. I'm just saying, I don't need to stare at it. But people did get screenshots of that <laughs> tattoo. Was, which, we got wow. we got a lot of we got a lot of feedback about that. So yeah. that was our that was our blunder. So but my anyway. favorite thing so far is Kristen's line from last week. I'm 40 now, and so the valley is where I need to be. What the fuck kind of thing is that to say? I can't get over that. When did the valley just become where old people go to die? I'm- I don't know. But I love I love the I also love the metaphorical implications. Like she already had her peaks and now she's in her valley. She's like, yeah, I'm I need to be in my valley right now. I need to be at the nadir. <laughs> valley time. I'm I'm 40 and in LA. I'm decrepit, so it's time for me to recede into the into the shadows of the valley. Of yeah. Death. Um. So then we hear the song. This time I listened for it, and yeah, I heard the guy's voice, the Randy Newman esque kind of Kenny Loggins e two, especially because it's like I'm all right, I'm all right, I'm all right, because I'm <laughs> all right. Isn't that the song they're singing? In the isn't that the opening song? Like, cause I'm yeah. all right. Right, which is not to be confused with the Kenny Loggins song, I'm all right. You know, here's Caddy what Shack. they should. Here's the here's a Huey Lewis one they need to heed. Gotta find a new drug. Oh, <laughs> Sorry, I was trying to think of it. How does that song go? We need a new drug. Nothing makes me feel like me when I'm with you. Want a new drug. Yeah, they need a new drug on this show because, like, how much can the nasal passages take? And take it from someone who loves that drug or liked it. Liked it. We I'll need a new one drug. Thing, but I'll tell you what song they will not be singing on the show because it's really antithetical to everything that they want. Don't need money. Don't need fame. They're like, no, cancel the song. That's everything that they need. <laughs> they literally need uh, money and fame. Yeah, they won't be singing 9 to 5. Don't need no credit card to ride this thing. <laughs> Because like I'm part. all right. Okay, so then after that theme song, they really do have a template for this music, which is, you know, what we just talked about. And this one is 
this song is funny. It's, I got $22 and a couple of smokes. I got 15 minutes and a couple of jokes. Everybody's laughing because they've run out of hope. We got 14 nights. It's about to get cold. Wow. This song was so self-aware. I was like, wow. Whoever they hired for this knows what show they're on. You know, yeah. they're like, it's just sad. Just mix some open mics in there with, you know, running out of hope. <laughs> And put it to a couple of chords. Yeah. they. I think that probably the person who wrote the song probably is just someone who auditioned for the show. <laughs> I mean, right? Like, it does sort of... Yeah. This is, so this is just valley. Dana from uh, Vanderpump Rules. <laughs> yeah. So they go to the Smokehouse, which I'm surprised they've never been to the Smokehouse before on Bravo, it seems like. They haven't they went been there. The they did? Have you? Uh, no, I've been there. Me personally. No, I'm saying I'm surprised on the show. You know what's funny is that um, our friends David and Angie invited me to have dinner with them at the Smokehouse. On I Friday, feel like that's a very David and Angie place. Yeah. To go. Yeah, I went there with I go there I went there with malls. I think like two times. It's a good place. Yeah, it's fun. It's like definitely a fun place. So here comes the show to ruin it. So Jack shows up and Kristen shows up and Kristen's like, oh seriously, seriously, are we getting bottle service? Seriously, because they got a big like red leather booth, you know. I was like, yeah, you know, I've always wanted to eat here, you know, because like, it was, it was like, I, I, I should have worked here, like when I moved here, because it's like, you know, it's where like the directors are and uh, like, the producers. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they're going to cast you. Like, I'm sure you're the first actor to take a gig across from Warner Brothers and um, have the brilliant idea that you're going to be cast as the next Batman. So, um Jack's like, oh, yeah, I know, I know it says Smokehouse, and that insinuates me, so sorry about that. And uh, Kristen's like, it goes like, and Kristen's like, seriously, Jax and I have known each other for 16 years. I'm vegetarian, so one would think that Jax would know better than take me to a steakhouse, seriously. I'm like, well, you should also know Jax better to know that he's never going to pay attention to your vegetarianism. He's going to purposely take you to steakhouses. That's just how yeah, it is. Yeah, just to piss you off. So she orders an iced tea and lemonade. With Tito's. Oh. <laughs> She's got this new Kristen guttural laugh that I really yeah. like. I like that yeah. Kristen's just embraced the kind of stumbling out of a trailer in Palm Springs personality. No, not Palm Springs. Palm Desert yeah. personality. It's like she's, um, it's like she said, you know what I'm going to be? I'm going to be a character on Poker Face. You know, <laughs> exactly. That's what I'm thinking of. That's why I said that. God, we're so on the same page. Actually, no, it wasn't Poker Face. I was thinking of that one with um, uh, Alison Dubois, the actress who played Alison Dubois on Medium. Medium. Uh, Patricia Arquette came out with this show that took place. That's on the same channel, but it took place in Palm Desert, and she's just that kind of character. She drives a she drives a car that has no roof because she accidentally it accidentally went under a semi or something like that. She's just <laughs> this, that's so your show. Chain smoking. I'm surprised you haven't told me about this before. First of all, it stars Patricia Arquette, and there's someone who has a car that drove under a semi. I I just I'm surprised you have not been like I've just been watching it all weekend long. I think I did tell you, and you were like that's stupid. But um, <laughs> never mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think Kristen is definitely going to be in that genre. That oh, oh, so. she's heading there. Um, so uh, Jax is ordering a regular Coke. Makes sense. <laughs> no one ever said he wasn't a cokehead. Um, so he's like, yeah, I, I yeah, uh, yeah. I was like, I should have, uh, I should have, I should have worked here. So the then we they order Jax orders a burger with ketchup and cheese only, <laughs> like he's a kid, uh, and. Uh, so they were talking about the party Please the do. other day, and Jack's like, yeah, you know, I hope you had fun, that party, uh, but uh, I just want you to know, like, I, I didn't mean to, like, uh, you know, like, get you in a corner like that, you know, with everybody, like, uh, like get, to get you in the firing squad, you know, you know, but the, when I was saying, like, you were standing right there telling us to come inside you, <laughs> yeah, uh, but, you know, uh, I hope you didn't feel that way. That's exactly what you were doing. Why are you bringing yeah. her, her here for this fucking fake apology? This and is classic can't even Jax. look at her. He's, like, looking around the restaurant, I'm like, yeah, yeah. Just get this out of the way so I can fuck with you some more for the rest of the episode. Yeah. This is classic Jax. He like he's a total dick and then he does the yeah, you know, I'm sorry, I got caught up. Isn't me, by the way, is Jax's Michigan accent stronger these days, or is it just I'm noticing it more because he hasn't been on the screen for as long? I've Could noticed like that break. he has no nasal capacity left. That's all I noticed. <laughs> That's not only Have you noticed the way little animals come running to the door whenever he re inhales and he's some 
Do you ever feel like there's some high pitch frequencies that we can't detect, but all the neighborhood critters can? <laughs> that happens through his nose. Yeah. Uh... I'm not detecting much. But then Kristen's like, yeah, well, I guess like what I was trying to figure out is like, why are my guy friends of all of my friends saying like, I don't trust your decisions in your own life, Kristen. I mean, it's the guys. Um, Kristen, I don't think it needs to really be a gender thing. I think literally everybody is sitting here watching, <laughs> not yeah. trusting your decisions in your life. Let's add them up, okay? We meet Alex later in this episode, and can I just say, there's a big six foot four decision that you made. Uh, yeah. It's pretty glaring. Like a big, like a weird, like it's like someone took Jonah Hill and stretched him northwards. <laughs> Truly. <laughs> in the worst way. So, um, Kristen's like, uh, yeah, I don't understand why Jack's brought up my most recent ex, Alex. Like, I sold my house, I moved in with him, he was the realtor, and then broke up, like, 17 times until he kicked me out and sold all my furniture. And then, like, he wrote, he, which he wrote off, by the way. So, but, like, with Luke, we don't yell, we don't scream. Our communication is, like, super impeccable. Super He's not 100%. there, Kristen. He's not there. He's okay. in Colorado. You're also not holding up in his house. <laughs> I love this. Okay, so she banged the realtor, which I love that for her. Because I have kind of want to do that. Like, let's face it. Like, especially if you have a hot realtor. Rawr. <laughs> so it's just like a dream, you know? Like, it's just like a porn yeah. setup, right? Yeah. So I don't know if she amazing. totally achieved the hot realtor thing, but she definitely <laughs> banged a realtor. Well, it's like taking the porn setup, but the homely version, you know? It's like, I fucked it's the like pizza the... delivery guy. He was hideous, you know? But, <laughs> yeah. No, it's cool because it's like it made me wonder, like, what would happen if the penguin were a realtor? And I sort of got to see that a little bit. Yeah, I fucked a cable guy once and it was not what I thought. <laughs> it was not what I thought it would be. You're like, so do I get free show time now? He's like, no. Also, I didn't really, <laughs> I didn't get anything out of it. I didn't even get like a showtime trial or anything. But I did well, realize something. Package. The same cable guys are always in the neighborhood. I never really noticed that until I fucked one. And then I was like, oh, you're here again. <laughs> Comcast, more like come cast. <laughs> more like come fast and leave because I didn't commit to you. So, Kristen, okay, so I've just disturbed everybody in this audience. Okay, so she banged the realtor. They broke up 17 times. And now he sold all my furniture that he wrote off, meaning he bought the furniture and you're mad at him because it was basically free to him since he got a write off. A fucking Kristen logic. I love it. Yeah. So um, uh, then we have a pick of Alex dressed like a penguin at a party. Speaking of penguins, and uh, as that's a representation of how good their communication is. Like caca, like I say caca, and he comes dressed as a bird. It's like perfect communication, caca. <laughs> but also, aren't penguins like maters for life? Don't they mate for life? Yeah, I think well, not in this case, Alex. Drop the Definitely ball on albatrosses. Anyway, my point is Jax and More Kristen condor. are both disasters. I like Kristen Moore as a human being. I think she's a decent human being, and Jax is not. So I'm team team Kristen on this one. But, you know, someone putting up a warning sign isn't the worst thing for you. You know, heed it. Heed. Yeah, but also, like, she's 40, and uh, you've been putting up warning signs for 16 years. You also have to know when to save the ink and just let her, let, <laughs> That's true. let Wiley Coyote go over that cliff. He usually the, winds The up road's okay. not going to uncurve itself. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, warning signs, but it doesn't mean don't proceed. Listen, you can put up, it's, it's okay to put up a warning sign, but please don't try to take the gas pedal out of the car. Yeah. Okay. I'm with you. But also, maybe Kristen shouldn't be driving a car. Um, so <laughs> that's the thing. And that's going to be the constant conversation on this show. Like, well, Jax is mean, but Kristen's also, but Jax is, but Kristen's also. And that's the genius of this show. They just put a lot of disasters on TV. Now we're just going to watch them crash into awfulness. each other. Yep. Just continues from show to show to show. Lazy, su uh, lazy Susan of Awful. So Jack says, uh, I'm pretty good at spotting a Kristen Doty disaster. Oh, I can spot it like a mile away. Um, well, he definitely can sniff it out. He just won't actually smell it. But um, <laughs> but that's also like being able to spout. That's like able to spot a mudslide. It's like seeing hills, a volcano. You know what I mean? It's like, huh, you know what I can tell? I can tell when a volcano's gone off because I can see that plume of ash in the sky. It's like, yeah, congratulations. I bet that baby poops his diapers. I'm like, yeah, it's a baby. That's what they do. 
<laughs> Stupid. <laughs> so then we see a 2020 clip uh, where Jack's like, uh, I found uh, found out you hooked up with this guy. And then there's like a video and Carter saw the video. She's like, um, oh, that video is from like four years ago. So he's like, uh-uh. So you didn't have sex two weeks ago? And she's like, no, it's what I got. And he's like, yeah, well, some, for someone who talks about the truth a lot, she sure lies a lot. And do you remember, this was at Kristen's t-shirt premiere party. How dare yeah. you try to ruin it with a sex video? Some might say he sabotaged that, you know, burgeoning national brand. That so, could have been the new Hanes. <laughs> it could have been the new Forever 21, Forever 40. Um, so now Jax is like, yeah, well, what about your finances? How are you going to pay for all this? Like, you know, you have a baby. What are you going to do? And she's like, you know, that's like one thing I absolutely hate talking about, finances. Ugh. And he's like, yeah, but like Luke said, I would never raise a child here. So like, what are you going to do? Like raise a child here? Like, what are you going to do? He's like, no, he's absolutely going to raise a child here. He's going to like, he's going to move here. Okay. Like I moved into a new apartment. So he's going to totally move here. And he goes, yeah, but he's not on the lease. And she goes, no, oh, whatever, Jack. And then we get kooky Kristen pretending she's committed to someone who's not committed to her music. And <laughs> Jack's is like, uh, it's not rocket science to see what's going on here. And I know because I have been a rocket scientist. I quit it for hockey. Uh, but, you know, like I was a I've social a media, got a social media job for uh, rocket science. Yeah. That's yeah. Not so I've seen a lot of a lot program. of people like Luke come into Kristen's life and uh, they need therapy after they need therapy after. Yeah, well, we've seen people come into your life, Jax, and they need Planned Parenthood afterwards. So let's not forget season one. So Kristen, <laughs> Kristen's like, uh, she's like, Luke is my forever. Okay, I see that. I feel that. I think you question whether he's actually different from my other boyfriends. And he goes, he's a sperm donor, sperm donor, all right? Sperm donor, all right? Kristen, listen, I've been in your life 20 years. And she goes, yeah, well, it's been pretty hard for me. Like that's just a general blanket statement. Like life, <laughs> my life for this past twenty years in general has been pretty hard for me. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I know you pretty darn well, okay, and you know me pretty darn well. And if I if I'll do something stupid, you're gonna call me out on it tomorrow. I mean, that's what friends do. And she's like, yeah, but like I just want you guys to start treating him like he's my forever shoulder, and like not like he's just some dude shoulder. And like someone like does like does anyone even know his last name? Does anyone know where he's shimmy. from? This is where she gets shimmy. the shimmy. I like when I'm, she does the like. Yeah. So, I'm actually genuinely asking because I don't know his last name or where he's from. I know. Do we know his last name or where he's from? Luke I don't Colorado. think anybody knows his last name. For I don't <laughs> Luke think Boulder. Any, Luke? Was it? No, I'm saying Luke Boulder, Luke Denver, <laughs> Luke. Yeah, we know Colorado. I feel like we're already better than Jacks. Yeah. So Jax just gives her a blank face like, why would I know his name? You know, like what a stupid thing to say. And he goes, okay, but look, Kristen, you're like adding another person to my group, which is like fine. It's like fine. Like, I mean, it's, it's my group. Like, it's pretty hard to get into, but, you know, like you're going to add a person? Like, fine. Like, I'll let him come to Guys Night and stuff, and I'll learn his name. I'll learn his name because, you know what? I don't bring people in easily, you know? But I was friends with your ex. So, like, I'm between a, hard, uh, a rock and a hard place here. <laughs> And um, and so Kristen's like, no, you're not. I'm more important than him. And he's like, okay, okay. So you have some seniority, which, by the way, I didn't even know you were allowed to say the word seniority <laughs> with this group. It's a little touchy. It's a yeah, word. seniority. That's why I moved to the valley. <laughs> right. So Jax is like being judgmental in his shady way of bragging. Okay, he has a wife, a son. He has it all. But the truth is, Jax stumbled into a saint that was willing to put up with his bullshit. God bless Brittany. Yeah. So uh, I'm sure people say that a lot where Brittany's from. God bless her. God, God bless, bless her heart. Her. God bless Brittany. God bless that poor, Ugh. poor soul did, girl. Did, did, uh, did y'all catch Brittany while she was in town visiting? God bless her. <laughs> God bless her with that permanent frown. So uh, the Jacks is like, oh, by the way, uh, Janet's, that was really fun. It was great seeing Lala and Sheena. And Kristen's like, yeah, by the way, how was your tat? Okay. Because, uh, by the way, um, and he says, oh, yeah, here's my tat. And he says he was worried that it was going to spread because he jumped in the pool right afterwards, which I guess you're not supposed to do with the tattoo. Which then is so like, Jax. Also, <laughs> did you know those were real tattoos that they were getting? Yeah. Who does that? Who has a party where you get real tattoos? How fucking gross. They all lined and I'm up. not saying tattoos are gross, but to get it at like Jax's carnival party, who wants that memory for the rest of their lives? Like I also, this one, I got to commemorate my daughter. This one, uh, was that time that Jax got really coked up at a kid's party and pants some dude. <laughs> that, that, yeah. That's a good memory. I always, so I don't have any tattoos, but my impression of tattoos is that 
<laughs> Here's my impression of a tattoo. Oh, I'm a tattoo. No. <laughs> my hold on, impression... hold on. Let's play the theme music. <laughs> do, 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 do. I'm a tattoo. My impressions of tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm a tattoo. I'm on your body now. Um, no. I oh, my God. Thought... You're like the rich little of tattoos. <laughs> <laughs> Simeon Vegas, the man of a thousand tattoo voices. I'm a tart. I'm an armband. Oh my God! It's a Ronald Reagan tattoo voice. <laughs> well, we could tear down that wall. Said a tattoo. <laughs> Morning in okay, America. Okay, what's your impression of tattoos? My impression of tattoos is that, like, a lot of times I thought it's something that people plan out. They think about. They want there to be meaning. They source an image or a word or a phrase they like put effort into it it's not like oh hey i'm at a party okay i'm just gonna i don't know put like a put a picture of joan crawford on there or something. i don't know like like i just feel like the the <laughs> joan <tattoo>. crawford <laughs> a very gay tattoo I don't know what, it's I don't very know I aged can... gay tattoo <laughs> <laughs> go put a Janet from Three's Company on there. I don't know. <laughs> a little Janet Wood tattoo. <laughs> what was her name? I like that you go Ryan's younger name. with Janet Wood. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get more current. Can we get Linda Ronstadt? <laughs> um, yeah. So so you just know these are all going to be just like thoughtless bad tattoos. Well, they are. You know, I mean, love the skin you're in. Am I right? So Kristen is uh, talking about how she was at she was in line to get tattooed, and Jesse she gave Jesse a titty twister, and then he gave her one back, and she's like, "Bro, like, what was?" I was like, "We're not that close, bro." And Jax is like, "Um, have you met anyone in your life who would do that? Like, really? Like, that's like you grabbing his dick. Like, what the fuck, bro?" I felt very bad for Kristen. Because I could see that she was genuinely uncomfortable about what happened and even discussing it because she got an extremely nervous laugh. She was doing this weird, like, she was like, oh, and he's like, oh, like, really, really giggling because you could see that she's, like, struggling with wanting to still be, like, chill. But she's, like, this bothered her, but she doesn't want to be, like, an alarmist. She, like, all those things. I felt so bad for her. Like, she, like, she should just be able to, not she should be able to, but, like, it, it sucks that societal pressures are put on to you where you're like someone twists your nipple and you have to like feel kind of like you can't be like that's fucked up that someone twists my nipple like you have to kind of like couch it in like uh, it's sort of funny right and i just felt bad for her and you're also talking to jack so it's like yeah i also know. felt bad that jack's is the one that she had to go to for it so then um this next song is tell me did you bring your appetite we're poor so then this is Jesse and Michelle uh, in their miserable marriage yeah, going to a park with their child who was going to be miserable any second. <laughs> if she's yeah. not yet, she will be. Yeah, yeah. This girl, uh, yeah, I already feel very badly for Isabella. So they go, they're going to teach Isabella how to um, ride a bike. And Michelle's like, so Jesse, did you watch the video I sent you about how to teach a kid how to ride a bike? And he's like, Ugh. the YouTube video but. No, I did not watch that. Like, I assume you just strap your feet into the pedals first and just let them go, stupid, stupid wife. She's like, no, it's the opposite of that, actually. He's like, oh, really? Because here's how you need to do it. We need to go to the top of a hill, strap her on, and just send her down. Like, what the fuck? Just send her down the fucking hill on her bike. That's what you do. <laughs> He's like, yeah, we've had so many arguments over parenting styles. Yeah, I just, like, I don't know until we had a child that he just, like, doesn't have patience or an emotional capacity for empathy or actually even a personality, which is something I really should have picked up on in the first place. Uh, sorry, Michelle. I don't believe you. And I actually like you. I think you're the way better one in this relationship, obviously. <laughs> yeah. But you're not going to tell me that it's a surprise to you that your husband's a jackass. This guy is clearly a fucking jackass. Everything yeah. he says is jackassical. And you're not going to sit here and tell me and expect me to believe that you were shocked that your husband's an asshole as a parent and makes you do everything. Give me a fucking yeah. break. Because not only were you dating the guy before you married him, you were working with him. So you know this guy's a piece of shit. You're just one of those people who thought he wouldn't be a piece of shit to you. Well, guess what? Yeah. Pieces of shit are pieces of shit. That's it. Okay? Not yep. different to different people. Everybody poops the same. 
Yeah, and Jesse is like, yeah, it's funny, like, because I'll walk into a room and Michelle will be like, um, Isabella, we don't do that. Or Isabella, our feelings. Isabella, I just walk in and go, Isabella! And she stops. I'm like, oh, that's... Sounds great for Isabella's future therapy sessions. <laughs> you can say a lot about me, but uh, I can make a child jump under a table in under a second. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> So Isabella's like, I don't want to get on the bike yet. I don't want to. Don't make me. He's like, get on the fucking bike, you little fucking brat. So he puts her on there. He's like, nah, nah. So she runs away crying. And so Michelle's checking on her. And she's like, I don't want to do this anymore. And so Jesse's like, yeah, was you that, know, was we that, talked about. Sorry, was go that ahead, Isabella ben. saying that? Or was that Michelle saying that about her marriage? <laughs> Can you clarify, I think it's please? both of them. I think that they're, they're going to be in. I just picture like a small Volkswagen bug from like the seventies that they're like driving down the freeway in with scarves on their head. Just looking, <laughs> looking in the rear. <laughs> At least I hope. Joan Crawford's in the back. <laughs> the tattoo came to life. So yeah, I hope they run like hell. So, um, Jesse's like, yeah, you know, people, you know, we've had the talk about how people change in a relationship and evolve and, I don't know if she's changing with me or if she's if I've just changed into somebody that she doesn't want anymore. Um, I think it's probably column B <laughs> exclusively. I think um, you've not changed. I think that she my guess is that she has changed in the way that she realizes that you're never gonna change. You know, <laughs> people have this common misconception that people change. I think she watched a really good movie and was like, wait a second. This movie's about my life, and I, I don't want to be like this movie. So, <laughs> she wants to go. She wants to go elsewhere. He has that kind of vibe of the divorced, bitter, aged LA guy, right? Doesn't he yeah, just already have that vibe? Guy. And he's married and has a kid, so he's not already. I mean, imagine what it's gonna be like when he is divorced. I bet he's. Or... I bet he's awful to her parents. Just awful. So yeah. uh, anyway, like Jesse, small cutting things. I'll bet he yeah. says little obnoxious things that are terrible. Yeah. So uh, he gets on the bike and he rides it, and they're like giggling. And Michelle's like, "Look, he looks so silly. Say that's my bike, Daddy." And she goes, "You know, nobody tells you how hard it is to keep a marriage alive. You know, it's scary. It's a scary thought that we might never get back to the way things were, which was me living in a bubble where I thought Jesse was actually attractive and interesting." Yeah. And so Isabella finally gets on the bike and it's really amazing how much misery fuels so much exercise in this world. It's like just yeah. depressed the child enough that she needs to get on the fucking Peloton. She just that's wants all, to get that's out of all she needed. She's like, wait a second, there's actually a contraption that lets me pedal away from my awful parents. Get me on it. <laughs> Okay, so Kristen and Luke run for literally five seconds in the canyon, which is Kristen, my favorite way to run in the canyon. Kristen running. Why have we never seen her run before? This was like truly my, like, I don't even know how to describe it. It was like watching something that looked halfway between a chicken and a giraffe trotting along. It was amazing. You know when people got married in the old days and they would tie cans to the back of their car? <laughs> It was like that. <laughs> cans bouncing in the back of a car. Yeah. Those cans bouncing back down the road. No. <laughs> Why is everyone throwing rice at me? Caca. So they're running and that then... That kills um, birds! <laughs> Luke's like, don't step in the horse shit. You know what that is? And, and she's like, y'all, it's definitely horse shit. So the He's producer's like, yeah, like, I'm from the country, so I got it. Yeah. I have a rap. So Colorado. I know what horse shit is. Yeah. I understand it. Makes yeah, sense. Yeah, well, we're in LA and we know what human shit is, and it could be the same thing. So <laughs> please, with your country. This is, this is true. Yeah. So the producer's asking who wears the pants in a relationship. Oh, he definitely wears the pants. Yeah. He's like, Yeah, I, I wear the pants. I love a man that's like a leader. Like, do it. Take me. Make the plans. Let's fucking go. Mariposa. Gaga. <laughs> That is not going to last. I'm telling you that. I just love that he's so manly and tells me what to do. Yeah, right, Kristen. Let's see how long that fucking lasts. So um, we see they stop at this bench and it says, the greatest act of courage is to choose love in every situation. 
Have you seen this show, Bench? Get the fuck out of here with that Stasia <laughs> Ray Robitali. Yeah, yeah, that no, choose love in every situation as we watch four different crumbling marriages <laughs> on TV. You know, here's what she needs to say. The greatest act of courage is to choose better. That's <laughs> that's the act of courage, okay? The act of courage is to actually make a choice that's not out of desperation and aging, okay? That's yeah, my, that's my advice. Put me on a fucking bench. I don't know what part of moving to the valley equates to choosing love, but there you go. <laughs> Choose bigger parking spaces. By Choose Cecilia gr- Ray protected Robitaro. green arrows. <laughs> Choose what? <laughs> protected green arrows. <laughs> it's like choose larger targets. I love that that's your big thing for the valley is the turn arrow. <laughs> it's, it is. <laughs> it's so funny. That is like the biggest thing in the valley. Anyone who comes to LA will be like, if you have to make a left turn, prepare to buckle up for five minutes because there's no protected green arrows and only two get to go at the end of the green light. If you're lucky, if someone's not asleep at the wheel. Okay. But in the valley, that green arrow comes on and the and life is good theoretically now it's still up to the drivers to do their part because i tell you you know what drives me nuts you're sitting there the light turns you so you have a green arrow so the first person is like oh it's the green arrow now let me move my foot to the gas now we take my other now let's hit the gas and i'm gonna go slowly to the green arrow so now you've like chewed up through half the green arrow time and the person behind them is like okay let me wait till they get all the way through the intersection and then I'll start going. It's like, no, go. It should be like one, two, three, four, five cars all at once. It should be a caravan, not like one car, two car, three car. It's ruined the entire green arrow utility. Yeah. yeah. In Texas, we don't have the drive through, drive through the uh, intersection and wait halfway through the intersection while everybody else is coming straight and you're getting ready to turn. And then you turn the second you have a chance. Here you have to stay behind the lines. You can't just mm. wander out into the middle of the road. And wow. it is so fucking frustrating. And it's so hard to not honk at people because you learn a certain way in LA because you have to do it because there's no green arrows. So yeah. you have to learn how to do it. And we don't have that here. And I pull out and people honk at me if I'm sitting in the middle in, in the intersection. They're like, you screw you, goddamn Californian. And, uh, yeah, I'm surprised. You would think that in Texas that would be like the land of pulling into an intersection. It's like, yeah, I'm a rebel. But um, yeah, you have to do that in California. Mm-hmm. My theory is if you're sitting there and you're, you're seeing the cars turning ahead of you, if there is a gap between car one and car two or car two and car three, a gap that's big enough for another car in the opposite direction to just come through, that means you're doing it wrong. There should, it should be like a wall of cars streaming that left turn on a protected arrow. Yeah. Okay, so back to not driving through green arrows. Uh, they're still at this fucking bench that I'm still mad at. The greatest act of courage is to choose love. Choose condoms. Okay, bench? So Kristen's like, oh, that bench is cool as hell. And they start talking <laughs> about lunch with Jax. And uh, she's like, oh my God, Jax was so sweet to me. It's like crazy. I mean, surely he just wants to be friends now. No, he's <laughs> about to fuck with you. He was calming yeah. you down so he can fuck with you again. Yeah. Well, but poor Kristen. I mean, the highlight of her week is that she saw a bench. So, you know, her standards are low. <laughs> She's like, I just read a book on a bench. <laughs> <laughs> is this bench available on Audible? So, um, so Luke is like, why is, so why is everyone questioning, all, questioning things? Because, well, I just think he, he doesn't think I'm taking getting pregnant seriously, seriously. And, like, the only thing I can guess is, like, my own body. Because, like, I just can't get, like, knocked up every day of the week, okay? Like, it might be difficult. And I don't want to keep talking about it. I'm just going to, like, keep talking about it, okay? So I'm just going to not put it out there in the universe that I am 40 years old. Because, by the way, I'm 40. <laughs> I've come to the valley to die. 40. <laughs> I'm five years past geriatric pregnancy. It's fucked up. And, and 15 years like, after geriatric sir waitressing. So, I mean, it's really, <laughs> it's really tough. Don't worry. Now you're into geriatric motherhood. It's going to be great. But also, this is Bravo. This is the land of people having babies well into their 50s. You're going to yep. be fine. It's all going to be fine. I would say you have the money to deal with it, but you don't. But you know what? It's okay. You can still maybe trade just do like hey if someone gives me their eggs i will take them to work for a week you know you know the there's a wonderful movie called um raising arizona she can get inspiration from that (laughs) did they steal a baby from the store (laughs) yes (laughs) they stole a baby from a convenience store they were robbing so there's always that option uh 
so Kristen's, uh, you know, Kristen's like, I, what, what if I can't have a baby? And Luke's like, listen, you're just spreading doubt right now. And she goes, yeah, you're right. I mean, this is all that matters. Me, you, this dog, and that pile of what we both know is horse shit. So if my friends have doubts, I don't really give a fuck. I'm sorry you couldn't get a tattoo at, at Janice's party, okay? Because it was really fun. We all got a tattoo. I'm never going to forget it. Jackson picked mine. What, I think it's a tramp stamp. What does it say? You're going to die alone and childless. Damn it, Jax! <laughs> I told him to write down the thing on the bench I saw last week. <laughs> That's what it said. Really? Oh. Um, so she tells a story about how Jesse tweaked her nipple. And Luke is really not happy about that at all. And he's like, there's like so much wrong with that. And she goes, yeah, but like, no, I feel like the dick because oh, I did it to him. And he's like, yeah, but it's not the same at all. And Luke is like, you know, this is like, you don't know where the line is with a person like that. If she had slapped him, would he have slapped her back? Uh, probably he would have. Yeah, I would say I yes. was going to say, yeah. I mean, they're like, no, everybody's like, no, of course he wouldn't. I'll bet he fucking would. He would. Yeah, I think he, he would. would too. So he's mad. He's boiling. And uh, we see a different side of Luke. I mean, I just thought Luke was going to be very, very passive and stuff. And he's very red-faced. Luke gets a yeah, lot of red-faced anger in this episode. He was angry in a way that wasn't um, didn't feel toxic, which I thought was refreshing. At least not yet. It was like justified anger, with that, but also controlled. It was nice. I didn't love it. I'm going to be honest. And here's why. I think it was justified. I love the anger with Jesse. I mean, Jesse's a fuck fucking loser you know so go for jesse but i worry when i see anger in people i didn't like the style of anger i thought it was like a, an enraged red-faced anger which i don't like because that's going to turn on Kristen one day you know i love to mock Kristen, but i love Kristen. like i don't want to see her yeah, in a so bad I, situation yeah. and i don't i don't love it like right now it's pointed in a way that she likes it she likes it pointed in that direction but i don't know it didn't read to me as like um anger like that but you never know you never know uh to me it read like just like righteous anger like i can't believe you did that i hate that righteous anger the no, righteous like in like it. but like in a good in a good use of righteous in the sense of I like think righteous like, anger is in general a good thing it just i don't i don't know i don't know why i'm arguing about it i just got a I sense I really that i care. didn't like I, I i don't know what it is i just got a sense of it i didn't like it you don't like it also i think it's his shirt that he wears later is terrible like i know you guys are in the valley and this is all fun and games for you but sir that shirt is tear that pattern i don't know what it was was it a windmill was it big white windmill smudges on a blue shirt like a blue bowling shirt what i don't the remember hell what it i just looked like i guess the thing is if i compare it to someone like mike shuhead who is like a righteous anger, but it's like bullshit. And it's just to make him, Mike will be, someone like Mike gets angry in a way to um, really, he's not, I feel like it's an insincere anger. It's an anger to make himself look better. I don't like that. But here it looked like this guy was genuinely pissed that someone did this to his girlfriend and he really wanted to. The reason for the anger I'm behind. Yeah, I like the re yeah. reason for the anger. I just didn't like the type of anger. I don't know how to explain it. Okay, we'll, we'll just leave that for now because who knows what's going to happen. Hopefully nothing terrible. Okay, so then a song, This Is How You Make Me Feel, This Is How You Make Me Feel. And guess what? It's a child running around screaming and crying and throwing things and throwing a temper tantrum. So. Yeah. And dogs and, barking. It's fucking chaos. And that is how this show makes me feel. And I think that's the point of it. This was a scene that um, basically was exactly what we knew would happen the moment that Brittany and Jax got married and then decided to have a baby. Basically, their child Cruz is running around screaming and crying. And Brittany and her mom are scampering around this house trying to find Cruz. And Jax is just sitting there on the sofa not helping, not being helpful rolling his eyes and like putting his head in his hands while his mother-in-law is is running urgently to see why their child is bawling at the top of their lungs. So, and then on top of that, you know that it's a combination of things that like, well, this kid sounds like he's could be really hurt. And of course, Jax isn't even helping. But then at the same time, you also know this kid probably also cries like that all the time. And Jax is shaking his hand, head because the kid does this because he knows that Brittany is always like, oh, crazy, what's wrong with you, crazy? I'm here to help, crazy. <laughs> so, so it's chicken and the egg. Sherry's and running around terrible. for him, and he's, Brittany's like, is he stuck? And uh, Sherry's like, he got under the couch. I mean, I was looking for that white ad I use on my lips, and so maybe he's trying to help me. I don't know, what's this my fault? <laughs> I'll just have to use one of those glitter Sharpies. 
So then over at uh, Jason and Janet's house, uh, Janet's like, hey, Jason, could you have a seat for a second? Ugh, we're having a meeting, okay? Now, listen, Brittany has a shop she wants to show me. It, like, has cribs in it and nursery items. I'm so uncomfortable having a baby. So <sighs> we need to get this all done before the baby's here. And he's like, yeah, I don't understand why everybody's like, when the baby's here, you don't have time to do anything. I mean, babies sleep. So, like, why don't you just wait until the baby sleeps and then do stuff? <sighs> Duh. Yeah can't believe it's been like millions of years and we just like finally figured it out God, can i tell you stupid. <laughs> yeah thankfully jason has it all figured out now uh janet is gonna divorce jason we know that right janet is not <laughs> staying all... with this fucking guy i'm telling you that right now he seems very nice but who thinks like this sir get your divorce lawyer friends ready because you're gonna need them they're all gonna get divorced let's be honest no yeah. not a single one not a single one of these couples is gonna make it just putting that right there I don't believe in marriage, but I do believe in divorce. <laughs> can't can't wait can't wait to see it. I okay. I I I don't know much about marriage, but I do know something about the valley, and it kills all dreams. <laughs> okay, it's a dream killer. <laughs> and marriage is a dream for a lot of people, so just putting it out there. Cool. So um, <laughs> now is say hey yo hey yo hey yo give them what they want say hey yo yeah give them what they want. Which is a self-defense class with the ladies. I'm just glad they didn't show us Jax and Brittany because that's not what we wanted. Yeah, it's the yeah. girls. The girls are doing like a self-defense. They're doing jujitsu, and um, Nia tells us she's like, she's like, I started, so I started taekwondo when I was eight and achieved all the way to my fourth, uh, fourth degree black belt when uh, you know I was competing for Miss Universe. Donald Trump brought in his creepy old rich friends to watch us rehearse, and one of them grabbed me by the waist, so I twisted his hand around. And I was like, don't ever touch me again. I'm a black belt. That was the least taekwondo -y story I've ever heard in my, <laughs> in my life. Could you have kicked him in the face? I need more. You know, throw him over, throw him over the car. Like, I need more. Um, so the girls sit and talk. And um, how much Michelle's talking about how much Jesse sucks. And Kristen is telling us that she's always been there for Michelle. Um, and they've all been there for her pre-Luke, you know? They knew Kristen when she was still a mess before Luke. Not this improved Kristen that's not a mess at all anymore because she has Luke. Yeah. Um, pre-Luke sounds a lot like puke, by the way. So Kristen is like, you know, my stuff is like, I don't know. My my stuff is live. Like, the, pre the pregnancy talk is pressure. I don't know why the guys are, like, chiming in. Like, I had lunch with Jax, and I was literally like, I want your love and support, and, like, that's it. And Nia's like, yeah, it would be different if he actually took the time to get to know Luke, because Luke is like an absolutely amazing quality human being. And then we see a clip of what she means, and it's at the pool party, and the girls are sitting around talking to Luke, and they're like, Luke, if you have any questions about being pregnant, just come to us. And he's like, you know what? Whenever it happens, it's going to happen, because that's just what happens. And so, like, until then, we just get to practice, right? And like, oh my God, we're a supportive guy. So Who love doesn't him. love practicing, right? So Michelle's like, by the way, I think that like Jesse's playing hockey with Jax, and he learned, he learned to walk by playing hockey. That's why he's so aggressive, <laughs> and missing so many teeth. Oh, this that's but not supposed to say that part. Mm. Then we cut to the hockey ring where Jesse, Jax, and Jason are playing hockey. And of course, Jack sucks at playing hockey. Yeah. That's so funny. Of course he does. Like we all figured he did, right? But I of course he's he good at it. But of you course did? he sucks. I thought Jax would be good at hockey. I kind of felt like he played hockey as a high schooler or something. And he talks about hockey so much. I just assumed he was good at it, but he was terrible. Well, that's why, of course, he was he's gonna be terrible because he's made up this whole persona that he's this hockey aficionado or you know, this hockey pro and he sucks so um jason is there in a very fitting double zero jersey which i liked and um he's like i work out but i don't play hockey and then they show a scene uh, they show him taking off his shirt and play porn music you know yeah i appreciated that and uh so Jax is winded and can't take anymore and jesse's like yeah Jax, yeah, skating's not amazing stick handling not great uh kind of shitty but a forever but, I mean, he did get here. He did show up. Yeah. <laughs> to the hot ring, so. This is more than he ever did trying to actually get that hockey social media job. So they sit down after like four minutes of playing hockey. And um, 
And then Jack's, J Jason's like, hey, guys, thanks for inviting me. Jack's like, yeah, I'm terrible. I haven't played in three years, but, you know, once you have a baby, your fun activities are gone. Am I right? Oh, man, babies are the worst. I can't. I feel bad for anyone who's about to have a baby. Oh, sorry, Jason. <laughs> right there. <laughs> and Jack's like, I just love Jason because, like, Jason's like a lawyer. I, I call it, like, lawyering, the stuff he does. <laughs> it's not hilarious. <laughs> but, like, you know, uh, like, if you say something, then he's like, hey, no, no, you, he's a lawyer. So he's like, you got to see it from this angle, too, though, right? And I'm like, shut up, lawyer. Stop lawyering. Literally, Jax's first scene of the episode was him telling Kristen, you got to see it from this angle. <laughs> Literally. <clears throat> so he's like, yeah, I miss my youth sometimes. We know, Jax. We can see your comb over. Okay. <laughs> so much comb over happening. It's got to hurt to have that much hair to comb over. It's like, how do I have so much hair here, but none here? <laughs> uh, he goes, let me ask you uh, this. So I had a lunch with Kristen, and she told me... Uh, she told me, Jesse, she gave you a uh, nipple twister and you uh, you did it back to her. And he's like, uh, and he's like, did you do that? He's like, I don't remember that. Like, that doesn't seem like my style. My style is more like making a caustic remark that haunts you for about three weeks. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Jason's like, yeah, I mean, allegedly she did it first, but I think a woman's nipple is kind of an elevated position to a man's nipple. So... Which, thank God, for one voice of reason. And so yes. Jack's like, yeah, so I don't know. Like, was she making it up? Like, was it not real? I mean, were you drinking? You know, I like the first two quality, the first two options better, you know? <laughs> the ones I usually go with. The woman's just crazy and lying, so. Yeah. And he goes, you know, and I know what I did was wrong. But that, what I did was more of like a bro-on-bro bro kind of thing, you know? And so now they're talking about, the, you know, how he pants uh, Danny. By the way, we didn't mention last week. I guess it was Brock who told him to pants uh, Danny. I didn't. I don't was remember it? seeing that part, but um, that's what they're telling. That's what they're telling us in the comments. So, wow. Brock too. The man shocked. who brought Oshin <laughs> into our world would. Um, the man who brought what? Oshin. That's exactly what I was thinking. I was like, yeah, that pack of Brock friends. They seem like a super classy group of people. Just watch yep. Southern Hospitality to get a little taste of that. Yeah. So he's like, you know, I think that Jack says, I think Danny needs like a night out. Like I could buy him a couple of beers. And how about this? How about this? Okay, guys night. What if I invited Kristen's ex to guys night? And then him and Luke could have a powwow. I mean, this <laughs> guy's like, such an idiot. You know? He's such an asshole. And um, Jesse's like, you're a child for even thinking about that. Okay. And what what if Luke leaves there and he's like, well, I don't want to be in a relationship with Kristen anymore. I'm leaving. So good luck in your next baby search. And Jax is just smiling like, yeah, duh. <laughs> Who do you think yeah. I'm doing this for? He's like, yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. So I'm still going to do it. Um, and uh, like, cause you know, if someone did that to Jax, he would not take kindly to it, but he's such a piece of shit and he's such a, he does this shit I mean, forget how much he did this on Vanderpump Rules all the time. Wow, this guy's so toxic. He is so bad. And it's like a tit for tat kind of thing where he's always getting revenge. Like, oh, you guys called me out on this thing, so I'm going to call you out on this thing. And, like, he'll build all this stuff up to, like, try and ruin your life. But what is he getting back at her for? Like, he's coming her at her being so actually hard. Genuinely happy now. Like and he's in a in a he's in a he's in a marriage that he can't stand with a child that he doesn't want to deal with, so he destroys people's happiness around him. That's always what he's done. When someone is thriving, he will do something to ruin it. Yeah, yeah, classy jo uh classy Jax. So Jesse's like, yeah, Jax has always been like this. I've known him the longest, and uh, he's a piece of shit. I love him. He is so fucking. Mad. I love a jock. I love a good jock. Yeah, I. I don't know why people are, I don't know if you know, I don't understand when they're like, oh yeah, he's just always been like this. Why are you friends with him? Yeah. <laughs> why are you friends with this person? Yeah. So um, the song, the next song is, there's a burning flame creeping through my veins. Yeah, I'm on fire. Are we just doing heroin songs now? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. What the fuck? And, and then that leads into a baby store shopping. Exactly. <laughs> And this is where Brittany's um, newfound frown face was really on display because she was like scowling this entire scene, but trying to be like cheery at the same time. So it's baby store shopping with Jasmine and Janet and um, 
Jasmine's like, this group, we're like family. You know, Zach's my bestie. We used to live in the same apartment building and we had like a Melrose Place thing going on, but now we're like in the Valley and they have like this adult hat on. But I feel like you can still be an adult and live in West Hollywood, right? Like Michelle and Jesse do it. And um, then we got to cut to the Michelle and Jesse <laughs> adulting, but not in the Valley. Yeah. And they're like fighting about champagne in the morning. <laughs> I like, um, by the way, I have to say, Brittany and Zach being wedged onto this show is hilarious because they're like, okay, we have just, like, <laughs> let's, like, take these two people from clearly a different show concept about a bunch of people living in an apartment building together and just, let, just let's add them to this show about couples. Why not? Yeah. Uh, and I like that Jasmine is so clearly a restaurant worker forever because she says things like, we're just a family here. Because that's, like, so <laughs> restaurant to say. Oh, my God, guys. We're just a family of happy apples and applebees. Don't be a bad apple. Don't be a bad apple, Ronnie. Okay, so Brittany comes over, uh, just how she is. She's like, oh my God, hi, you were so pregnant. You look so beautiful. I just want to grab that tummy every time I'm around. Give me that tummy. <laughs> Give it to me. Don't make me chase that tummy. I'm going to chase it. I'm going to chase it. <laughs> just kidding. It wasn't running. It was right here the whole time. God, I love tummies. Jenna says, I told Jason you can take this some of the time. Ha. Brittany goes, boys, being pregnant. <laughs> yeah, so you need to buy my total. Okay, you know what? Boys being pregnant. Have you ever seen that movie, Junior? Oh, I wish. Funniest movie I ever saw in my life. Though, by the way, I just saw it yesterday for the first time. I was like, howdy, 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 ho, Jack. This is a funny movie. Jack, Jack, watch these. Arnold Schwarzenegger's pregnant. They can do that now, Jax. Could you imagine boys being pregnant? That's crazy. What kind of bottles are they going to give them? Beer? I think you would never be that crazy. <laughs> How are they even going to nurse? It doesn't even make sense. That's why it's so funny. <laughs> okay, you're going to need a lot of baby things. You're going to need a changing table, bottle. You're going to need some tummy time stuff. And Jenna's like, I hate babies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look here. My mom's for sale. Because you're going to need a sherry to help run after your child when he goes crawling under a couch. You're going to need someone to listen, lift the couches. That's what you're going to need. <laughs> <laughs> So John was like, babies are stupid. I don't want fucking babies. I never thought I would have to do this. <laughs> and then she goes, what is this on this little fake baby? What is this, a straight jacket on a baby? Stupid. Is this even real or is it like a joke? Are they saying like, put babies in straight jackets? And she goes, <laughs> and uh, Brittany's like, that's called a swaddle. It's like a waddle, but waddles are things you get taken off the bottom of your chin to make you frown. Am I frowning right now? I'm really smiling. Just kidding. I'm really frowning. Oh, I kind of miss my waddle. Is that weird? <laughs> Can I put this swaddle on Jason's face? Just asking. You know, so, my waddle got so big, I swaddled my baby in my waddle. <laughs> it's like a rhyme on my face. Oh, that's the, that's the, only the funniest thing I ever saw. <laughs> So, so are you all decided for girls night? <laughs> we're gonna watch Hope Floats, but we're gonna watch it for syncing it up with Pink Floyd. Apparently, when you do it like that, it really matches. When Harry Connick Jr. leaves, it's like they're singing about the moon. There's nothing like taking shots while Harry 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 Connick Jr. drives away from that screaming little girl. <laughs> I love to laugh and cry at the same time. <laughs> laugh crime. It's a new waddle swaddle. <laughs> I'm so happy. Hey, yeah, 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 So Janet's like, yeah, I need like a swaddle for Jason when he tries to get frisky because he'll get me pregnant again. Fucking stupid babies. I hate babies. <laughs> so Brittany's like, no, I just love Jesse and Michelle's new house. It's like right by Chateau Marmont. It's like very bougie. <laughs> it's that from Lisa Vanderbump. Jesse, the most bougie, most bougiest person I've ever known. Okay, he's from Boston, though, so I don't know why he's so bougie. It's so weird. What is Boston anyway? <laughs> Do they serve tea there? I hear they have a lot of bunch of tea parties. It's so weird. Well, it's just a place that serves chicken and mac and cheese. I don't know what's so <laughs> bougie about that. <laughs> Apparently, their seafood there is legal. I don't know. I don't understand it at all. <laughs> you can only wear socks that are red. I like that Brittany also thinks it's so bougie just because it's by a place with a fancy babe. Yeah. It's by the Chateau Marmont. <laughs> they drink Perrieres. Perrier? Yeah, yeah. So um, she's like, wow, knees fresh from having babies and Asher ain't even two. I can only imagine how overwhelming that must be. And then we see a clip of Nia like, oh, his, they showed his penis to everybody. His penis. <laughs> Daniel's penis. 
so um uh What's her face? They're going like... to have a girl's night for her, basically, to yeah. cheer her up. And Brittany's like, she needs it, baby maker. I love baby. You know why I can't wait till Nick is pregnant again in the next five minutes so I can say, give me that bump. Give me, give me that bump. <laughs> I won't touch your bump. I just can't help touching the bump. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Only person that loves bumps more than me is JX. <laughs> so um, they're like, do you have a theme for the baby's room? And Janet's like, no, I don't want a theme. I hate babies. <laughs> Baby stuff is the worst. I feel bad for people who are obsessed with babies. Oh, sorry, Brittany. You're right here. That's okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sorry. So now we go to Danny and Nia's condo. And um, Nia's like. I'm sorry. Nia's this looks like kid. bloody hell. You all have fun with your kids. I'm not telling you don't have them. I respect you. You do your thing. This looks like the seventh circle of hell. One kid running around scrying screaming and crying banging on things the other one you're holding in your arms while the other one's in the dad's arms and you're just like how do i make enough milk to keep going Slot, stop just fucking stop that's how yeah. you do it go to the fucking 7-eleven to buy some of that shit that's in cans and tell your baby to shut the fuck up oh my god can't, can't you like serve them like seven up or something i don't know so she's like okay let's knock for dada come on asher daniel get over here daniel so it's like, how did you meet Nia? And Danny says he went to a party and he saw her, but she was with someone. But then he was like working at a church and then she came in and he's like, oh my God, like, thank God she walked in because she was like the most beautiful woman he'd ever seen in her in his life. And this this couple, of course, has the most romantic story, like last week. Um, I like him because he's hot and that's important to me. And then this week, how did you guys decide to get married? She was really hot. Yeah. <laughs> also, she went to my church, so that was that was a bonus. It's like a hot person at my same church, so was, that was great. Yeah, yeah, sexy hot. And you guys have just... a long life ahead of you. I see it. I see it already. Fifty year anniversary, babe. Remember that time you were hot? Yeah, babe, you were so hot that time too. She's pregnant still. It's like, Jesus Christ, how many do you need? <sighs> so, Throw me um... that bump. Give me that bump. <laughs> so living in. Living in there 50 years. So then Nia's tell, talking about what she's been doing since winning Miss USA. She's basically been doing a lot of pageant coaching, international pageant coaching, pageant coaching. Super important coaching. things. She's giving super important things to the world. Yeah. Which is great. Um, so then um, she's got to be gone to coach, presumably. And um, Danny's like, but what about the milk? And she's like, oh, my God, I've been trying so hard. I'm drinking so much water, and I'm just milking all the time. I'm eating all the right foods. I'm just, I'm milking as much as I fucking can. He's like, well, we need more than this. Like, this isn't enough milk. He's <gasps> like, please don't use the zombie voice while we're talking about my breasts. Please. <laughs> That's not going to make me lactate. So uh, then they start talking about Jax and the, the whole pantsing issue and she's like oh my god it's so annoying and frustrating like why and he's like yeah like what was his intention with that i mean like deflecting he doesn't need to be adding to what i'm dealing with and so it turns out it sounds like she has some um postpartum you know she's saying she talked about hormones and emotions and sometimes it just feels like a lot and she wonders this is my new normal she's like obviously grappling with emotional stuff right now and so she just the last thing she wanted to deal with was Jax and his stupid pantsing prank. And she's like, and Brittany just makes excuses for him. And then we get a clip of Brittany being like, I don't even think he even realized those were pants. I think he <laughs> thought he saw a big stalk of corn. He was just trying to shuck it so we all had something to eat. It's just Jax. He, he just, just wants to meet people at his party. He wants to provide. He's a provider. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad, by the way, I'm really glad that Nia acknowledged that Brittany was making just a shit ton of excuses for Jax, Jax because it was hideous. We all saw it, and I feel like I felt like no one even commented on it. Yeah. Okay, so next we go to Jessie and Michelle's, and um, she's unpacking a ton of to-go food at their bougie house by the Chateau Marmont. And he's like, what are you doing unpacking all that food? And she's like, well, I, maybe I should have just left it in a bag and waited for them to come. And he's like, no, they're going to be here in 30 minutes and you're just doing your food now? Ugh, gross. She's like, well, I was with the baby. Oh, oh, and by the way, Janet and Jason aren't feeling well, so they're not coming. He's like, yeah, that sucks that Jason can't come. I want to make fun of him about his roller hockey and getting smoked. I was like, you're just... 
You're just boring even in the things you want to make fun of. <laughs> yeah. So now we're at the alternate title for this show, Two Bit Circus. <laughs> no, right? So I approve That's that. what I was thinking. Two Bit Circus. <laughs> yep. So Luke, did he tell the bartender, hi, dear, can I have a whiskey on the rocks? Or is he saying, hey, there? What's I think he saying? I'm, Why is he I'm talking a, like that? I don't that? remember, but I'm assuming he said hi, there, not hi, dear. <laughs> I'm assuming too, but I rewound it a couple of times and I could have sworn I heard hi dear. I'm not really sure, but well, do you want to get embroiled in another Pomeranian uh That's why I'm asking. That's why I'm not accusing him of anything. Okay. I'm just I'm asking. It's, I believe it's a question. as someone who did not take any mental note of it, I'm just going to assume he said hi there. And it may have sounded like hi dear. Well, as someone who's called dear a lot while they're bartending, I heard hi dear. <laughs> Hi, dear. So uh, Jack shows up and everything. What's up, dude? This is like cute. This is cute, dude. It's like an adult arcade. Yeah, it's really cool. It's cool. Yeah, it's cool, man. And Luke's like, yeah, badass. It's like, yeah, I don't know why Kristen makes us hang out with her boyfriend. I feel like a kid. Like, oh, Joey's mom set up to hang out with you, so I'm going to hang out with you. So uh, anyway, yeah. So they have this awkward, they're just like hanging out. And it's like very awkward. It's like, how's your week? How's your week? And they clearly hate each other and have nothing to say to each other. And so then Danny comes in and Jax is like, Danny's here. You got a belt on this time? Just kidding, bro. Just get, can we let this go? Queen, let this go. Can we drop it? N no pun intended. <laughs> so he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm, he's like, I'm never one to hold a grudge. And he has a good heart and a good soul. And I think Nia took that more seriously than I thought it was. I mean, I haven't, you know, I've been pants a million times, just not since junior high. So Jax is like, okay, you know, listen, Luke, I invited you to boys night because, you know, I think, I guess we have to get to know you or whatever. Like, apparently you have a last name, which is fucking weird. I mean, so you were like the sheriff, Kristen's boyfriends, you know, like Sam, whatever your name is. And he's like, it's Luke. And uh, I'm glad you invited me because I need to have a conversation with somebody. And Jax is like, ah, I think I know what this is about. What is this, tit twi titty twisting? I mean, who even knows if that's real? It's like the moon landing. <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> so then he's like, um, I said, like, Kristen, he's like, yeah. And, and Jack's like, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yes, Jesse was in, it was uh, inappropriate with Kristen. And he's like, yeah, what the fuck, man? It's like disrespectful to me. It's not cool. And then Anne walks Jesse. Dun, dun, dun. So he goes to the bar. Luke's stressing because he has to talk and he's like, uh, he crossed the line. I'm going to deal with this. So he goes to the bar. He's in the worst shirt I've ever seen. And this is what I'm saying. This was the shirt I'm talking about. It's hard for me to be on his side, even though he's 500% correct in this situation. It's hard for me. I'm like, maybe Jesse, maybe Jesse didn't pinch Kristen's nipple. Even though I saw it happen on TV, it's hard for me to be on that side because of the shirt. Mm. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Fashion can really, can really sway an opinion, you know? Yeah. Um, so Jesse's like, yeah, it looks like, so, uh, what are you getting? He's like, yeah, I'm getting a skinny mark and a class Azul. You want some? He's like, no, I'm gonna have some whiskey. Yeah. So by the way, I found out something on Saturday. So, uh, you grab Kristen's boob. He's like, um, so I'll be completely honest with you. I don't remember her touching me or grabbing my nipple and I don't remember grabbing her. So I'm not saying it's a lie, but I... I'm going to say that maybe your girlfriend is an untruthful, obnoxious um, person who doesn't understand reality. It's like, no, whoa, 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 Jesse. He's like, your girlfriend is COVID. Fake. <laughs> Luke's like, um, well, there's no question about whether or not it didn't happen. Because it definitely happened. Um, and he's like, well, there's a question for me. Um, you know, so. And he goes, well, there's no question for me. And she's the person who got grabbed. So, and he's like, okay, look, bro, I'm not this kind of person. I'm not going to sit here and fight with you because I'm an adult, okay? So I'm not arguing that it didn't happen. And he goes, okay, then stop saying it didn't happen. If it happened, because that is basically art. Jesse's such a fucking asshole. And by yeah. the way, if you're so drunk that you can't remember and you're black, then you're a blackout drunk and you need to stop. And that was a child's birthday party. Like, If you're grabbing, a, if, you're, if you're twisting um, a woman's nipple while, if, you're, if you get drunk enough that you don't remember, what happened and you when you get very drunk you twist a woman's nipple that's not a good place to be in in your life 
So right. he's Lucas basically saying like, just stop saying if it happened. Just like own up to it, okay? You owe Kristen an apology. You owe me an apology, and then Kristen after this, he goes like, no, one hundred percent. You know, if it was playful and I grabbed her someplace I shouldn't have, I apologize. Jackass. So yeah. the producer asked Jesse if he's threatened by Luke, and Jesse's like, that's like asking a panther if they're afraid of a kitten. Well, <laughs> sir, you were no panther. You were no panther. <laughs> okay, so Luke's like, okay, you apologize. Now you just apologize to Kristen, and we're good, bro. She's like, oh, great. I'm good with Luke. So then um, Jax and Danny are having their conversation, and they're talking about being pantsed and stuff like that. And so Jax is like, okay, so, you know, Kristen had this ex-boyfriend who I'm so close with. Of course, you don't know him, <laughs> which is why I'm telling yeah. you who he is right exactly. now. When I have him at every guy's night, apparently. Okay, but... You know, she has this boyfriend named Alex, and uh, you've met him before. He's a nice guy, right? He's always at guys' night every time. This yeah, guy's such like so invited such him. a fucking liar. Also, did they cast Alex on this show just for mess? Gotta be, gotta be. He's like, so I invited, I invited Alex, and Danny's like, you did what? He's like, yeah, it's not a bad thing. We're we're guys. I get along with my exes, um, like Saucy. <laughs> Like, Stassi barely tolerates Jax. Well, so I think he went on tour, actually, with Stassi for a did while. Did he? Yes. Oh, he was, like, doing... He was on bus with her going on her tour or something. I think they got in a fight, but... Yeah, ask Laura Lee. Let's get Laura Lee over here, the girls' Yeah, night. See how that turns exactly. out. So Danny's like... Uh, he's like, I know you are. I know you do, but... And that's how it works, whatever for you. And Jax's like, but Alex is nice, and Luke is nice. They're nice people. They're gonna get along. It's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be great. Danny's like, um, no, I'm not friends with any of Nia's exes, and she's not friends with any of my exes, and that is how you protect a relationship. Yes. So then, um, let's see. So he's like, oh, God, what did I do? Okay. So then uh, Jax is like, Kristen slept with pretty much everyone I know, though, so <laughs> including me. It's like, if I couldn't hang out with her exes, like, there would be no one to hang out with. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> So now we go over to Michelle's. People are showing up. Zach shows up. It's like, okay, between guys' night and girls' night, like, obviously my friends are the girls, but the qualifier is having a vagina. Because I'm like a platinum gay, because like I've never been in or out of a vagina. I was a C section. Oh my God. Oh my God. This is the fanciest China. <laughs> my fanciest class is a solo cow. This is hilarious. You guys are filming this, right? Are you getting all this? It's hilarious. <laughs> Listen, I've waited like four years for this, so this material is ruddy. Who told Brittany that, that having a tail, a ponytail that looks like a cat toy is a good idea? This is her new thing. Just wearing bald, that bald, not bald, bald up, like B-A-L-L-E-D, hair. Where she has a ponytail, but each little section, it's like sections of ponytail, and each one has a ball in it. Ooh, it's so oh, yeah. gross. And this is actually a clean one, but last week it really looked like dust dust bunnies all clobbered together on her head stop i don't know who told you that was cute it's not stop doing it so kristen shows up and she can't figure out how to open up the door she's like why is it locked Kaka. oh knock 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 michelle it's locked and so she's just like working at it and then she just had to like what just push it or use the wrong <laughs> i think it's like a, she was using the wrong doorknob which is typical in those old houses because they're like don't change the door just put a new doorknob on it well i was the one just earlier today i went to Dwayne reed and I stood in front of the door. It said automatic door. And I just stood. It just was closed. And I was like, um, do I have to push it? And I was sitting there, like, pushing the automatic door. wouldn't open. And, like, it just wouldn't. Nothing would happen. And I looked to the left. And the one next to me was just wide open. And I was like, oh, okay. I am now Kristen. <laughs> <laughs> I just christened out. I christened out at Dwayne Reed. Okay. So, Brittany comes in. She's like, oh, Nia, you look incredible. You are just so gorgeous. Let me touch that bump. <laughs> 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 I love that she tells her you're so gorgeous you have no idea she's Miss USA I think she knows yeah she knows she knows how many times do you have to tell her you know <laughs> so they're doing shots and everything and Michelle's like oh my god I was like is this enough tequila and now look at us ha ha everybody's like this is a girl's night out but it's also a mom's night out right, right. <laughs> except for you Christine sorry <laughs> hey we're all moms before 40 cheers <laughs> <laughs> so um 
me as like, oh, yeah, I'm, I finally get to get out of my house and celebrate with the girls. And she's like, celebrate. <laughs> Cheers to Nia for being so pretty. Ain't she pretty? Ain't she's she pretty. Ain't hey, she I'm pretty. Just, I want a rubber boom. <laughs> she's so pretty. Hey, hey, let's pull down her pants. I'm <laughs> just kidding. Brittany, why are you rubbing the wall? Because I think it's pregnant. I love the bump on this wall. <laughs> <laughs> Brittany, please put down the taco. What's so bumpy? <laughs> hey, um, so she sits down with Nia and she's like, Hey, I'm just like, I'm so sorry, because last time I saw you was like you were you was a train wreck. And like the last thing Jax would ever want to do is make you cry. Never a pretty girl that make you cry. I never want that. He was so sad. Yeah, he like hey, he was crying. I didn't mean nothing by it. Yeah, oh, boys. Man. Jax has grown up in so many ways. I mean, he's lost hair. He's gained hair on his back. But he's still pants and boys. <laughs> boys will be boys, am I right? You know, boys, they do the stupidest thing sometimes. You just have to laugh, you know, because it's funny if you really think about it, you know. But, like, he didn't mean nothing by it. He didn't know me no harm. <laughs> so then the next song is, I can't go back any longer. And I can't live in the future i gotta be here right here right now and it's danny going <laughs> then it goes to danny going how are there no pickleball places in the valley <laughs> yeah guys <laughs> live in the present another another um another pro for the valley on the pro column no pickleball places um uh, by the way this yeah these lyrics i can't go back any i can't go back any longer and i can't live in the future that really does describe this crew like they they miss their youth, but they're incapable of having any sort of foresight about what the future will bring. Yeah. Um, so Danny, okay, so the guys are doing shots, and Danny's just going three under two, baby. Three under two. <laughs> so congratulations. Jax. You've splooged a lot. Yeah. What the fuck do you want? A prize? Stop saying that. Yeah. It's like saying, like, hey, guess what? I just got my third flat tire because I drive over <laughs> glass. Congrats, you did something terrible for yourself. He's so, like, lots of consequences. Lots of consequences <laughs> in under two years, guys. <laughs> so Jax pulls Luke aside and he's like, hey, you know what? Like, uh, I'm gonna, I love this kumbaya moment. Okay, let's have like a chat, Luke. Okay, all right. So I have great motivation on this. And I, I know I want you to be part of this group, you know? So I'm trying to think of a way that we can all be, you know, we can all be like, hey, like we're all, all going to hang out. Like we don't want to be like, who's coming tonight? Who's going to come? Like who could be like, I'm not inviting this person because of that person, you know? Because we're just going to be a bunch of my friends, like a bunch of guys, you know? You know, just like guys hanging out with guys, having no drama with other guys, you know? So you're, you're reasonable. So you get along with anyone, right? 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 That's why I'm inviting Alex. <laughs> and he's like, what? He goes, what's the point, dude? Why would I try to get along with my girlfriend's ex, dude? What's the point, bro? What is it? He starts getting all worked up. And uh, he's like, Kristen has told me that her ex triggers her. And Jax knows that. Jax knows it. So he's trying to make her freak out. Yeah, I don't think I don't think friends would do this to friends. So Jax is like, yeah, you know, I just thought there was a world where, you know, you could, you guys could laugh it off, you know? <laughs> he's like, I'm not going to be okay with a guy like that, dude. I'm not okay with that. He goes, well, I invited him here. He's like, Why would you give this guy a chance? Why would I want to be friends with the ex of my girlfriend? I have, I have her 100%. I have her back 100%. Luke plays right into his hands and has, it like, just gets so snitty. I think it's so funny. And rightfully so, right? I mean, obviously, this is just a check. But I yeah. love watching him just lose his shit. Like, he's so, he's like, how could Kristen even hang around these people? What the fuck am I doing here? I think by Kristen having him hang around her friends is going to make him want to run for the hills. Don't you? I think it's a bad move on Kristen's part. Yeah. Actually, like the thing that would have been the worst for Jax would be if Luke and Alex actually got along. Jax would hate that. He wants Luke to run away. Right. So anyway, this is just so it's so disrespectful. So Alex shows up. He looks, I mean, he, this is Alex is so someone we've seen in so many clubs in LA, just like this. Just like this tall, disgusting guy in a hat. Just the worst. He's gross, yeah. So the girl back to the girls' party, uh, Brittany's like, No, are you getting drunk? And she's like, Well, I'm getting a buzz, but I do have to nurse my babies all night long. Oh god, I wish Danny was here to say three and or two. But he's not. <laughs> he's, he's very handsome. I miss his handsomeness. 
Oh, he is handsome. <laughs> Obviously, you're nursing. Oh, do you have any bumps I can just like caress? And Michelle's like, so by the way, has anyone heard from her husband since? Because I, you know, I checked my phone and I, and I haven't heard anything. Oh, wait, no, there was one text that says, "Still hate you." That's Jesse's way of playing. Ha 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 ha. I wish I knew how playful he was before we got married. <laughs> and Brittany's like, well, Christian, I have some stuff to tell you because I don't want you freaking out when you hear stuff later, okay? Now, I think Alex is going to be there tonight. He's going to be at circus. He's going to be at, at, at two-bit circus. What do you think of that, Christian? <laughs> and she's like, are you fucking kidding? And Christian's like, like shoulder and her head is like, <laughs> like she's in a very... It's like she's in a wagon coming over the Oregon Trail back in the day. <laughs> She's very like, With one wheel constantly hitting the stones. Like one wheel is on a perfectly nice patch of grass, but there's like stones on the side that the other wheel keeps on hitting. Ooh, ooh, ooh. But one of the horses took an Adderall. It's just like. <laughs> <laughs> there's some broken spokes. So, so, uh, Chris is like, are you kidding me? She's like, it's going to be fine. Kristen's like, uh, come on, fuck, come the fuck on, Brittany. I don't want my ex-boyfriends around me or my family. Why is that so fucking hard to understand? And then Brittany really starts turning. It's like, whoa, what I'm trying to tell you, I want everyone to hang out. She's like, Alex and I started dating when I was still on Vanderpump. And months later, when everything like crashed and burned, he belittled me. And he made me feel small. Like, he used to say things like, are you ever going to pay rent? I mean, he treated me like I was a has-been reality star. Mainly because I was a has-been reality star at that moment. And, you know, it's just not, like, not something you want to hear from your boyfriend. Oh, God. And she's like, and now he's coming around my friends. And she's like, well, Alex has been friends with Jax for a long time, Christine. And she's like, why are you acting like he's friends? Why is everybody saying that he's not friends with us? What are you talking about? She's like, he is, though. Zach is like, oh, there is no, like, who is messier. Like, Kristen and Jack are, like, tied for, like, messiest, like, always. But it's, like, only because they, like, love each other. And he is so the neighbor. He's making the faces like the neighbor from Bewitched. <laughs> he's always spying on them and like, is she wet? Like, he's just making all these faces to the camera like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. very subtle, Zach. I love your subtle acting over there. So he's like, uh, I mean, I would say that they have this like brother and relationship, this brother and sister relationship, but like I think it's illegal to like have sex if you're a brother and sister, so I shouldn't say that. <laughs> Surely no one else has made that joke. <laughs> Not even Jax on the first episode. Ten times. So none of you guys have been with him. None of you guys have dated Alex. And Brittany's like, yeah, but I was there when you broke up, okay? I was there for every second for you. And Dak is like, I have never wanted to be a guy's night more in my life. <laughs> <laughs> and Kristen's like, I don't want that guy near me. And um, Brittany's like, well, we would never have Alex had to play say Christy was I up, but this is just Luke. It's not that big of a deal. I mean, boys will be boys. She needs to calm down a little bit and like take it for what it is and just breathe. I mean, I love bumps. So does that mean that Brittany would be like um, chill if Michelle had invited Faith over? Just exactly. Wondering. Yeah. Just wondering. Exactly. Yeah. So um, uh, Brittany's, Brittany's all chill until it's her. You know? Yeah. So Brittany's like, I'm just trying to be a good friend to you and let you know that he's going to be there tonight. And Although Kristen like, probably wouldn't be inviting Faith over either. Sorry, I'm stuck on the Faith. Go ahead. Yeah. Carry on. No, Kristen definitely would not be. <laughs> so Zach is like, well, he should not be there tonight. That is, like, really fucked up. And Brittany's like, or maybe Luke shouldn't be there because they're actually friends, okay? Because he's not friends with him, but they're friends with Alex. How about that? And this okay. is where Brittany shows her ass. Of course, Brittany's here thinking Jax is right, you know? That's the thing that sucks. Yeah. She's not only sticking up for him because she's married to him. She actually agrees with Jax. That's why she's she does. evil. Yeah, she really does. Because she goes, sorry, you just said Alex deserves to be there more than Luke. When he's like, well, because they were friends before, whoa, 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 okay, and now Jax isn't trying to include Luke. Uh, so now they're fully yelling at each other, and Brittany's like rolling her eyes at Kristen, and Kristen's like, but I just had this conversation with Jax, don't hang out with him. And she's like, but you're not there. So then we go back to boys' night, and Jax is playing skee-ball with Alex, 
And uh, Alex is like, oh, there's only two balls, though. And he's like, that's what she said. <laughs> so listen. Uh, listen uh, so, this is uh, a two-bit circus. There's only two balls in the ski ball machine? <laughs> God. So oh. we're talking about how, you know, Alex is childish. I mean, like, uh, yeah, Luke is childish for not being able to speak with Alex. And then um, Luke is still pissed over in his corner talking to someone named Dave about how pissed he is. And then yeah. Jax is like, well, wait, so weren't you paying Kristen's mortgage for a while? Oh, yeah, Jax. You just wanted everyone to get along, huh? So now that yeah. you can't get a scene with Luke, you're just going to get all the information that you wanted. That Kristen was just using this other guy and being crazy the whole time anyway. So Alex is like, yeah, I like lent her a lot of money. I sold the house for free, man. Jax says, oh, yeah, for free. She, so she forgets to tell people little details like that. Yeah. And she lived in my house for six months for zero dollars. I'm like, well, you're in a relationship. <laughs> How dare you then, like, retroactively say that she didn't pay rent in your relationship? Yeah. So, God, Jax is like, I don't understand. Like, I, I thought you guys could just get along, you know? Because right now he's in that place where he's just like, oh, my God, sex is so good, you know? And Alex is like, yeah, I was there. I remember that moment. <gasps> yeah, I know. It's just a matter of time before he becomes another casualty. I'm like, yeah, but you're aiming the gun at him right now. <laughs> That's why he's going to become a casualty. Yeah, so Britt still fighting with Kristen, saying, You know, Jax, you know that if he wants him to be together, to them to be together, that that's a good thing. It's a big deal for Jax is trying to bring your boyfriend into the group. <laughs> I don't give a shit, Brittany. Well, Jax just trying to do the right thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Brittany is such a twit. So she she says Jax is just being malicious, and Brittany's like, And you're not, not stirring stuff up. Kristen goes, what am I stirring up? And then we get dramatic music, like, dun, dun, dun. What is Kristen stirring up? Because we're we so know. righteously on Kristen's side at this point that we forget that Kristen is Kristen, and Kristen is up to some shit, too. <laughs> so but, now we get to find out what Kristen's up to. This is what I think it's going to be. I think it's going to be, I think Brittany is going to say, you're accusing Jesse of twisting your nipple and you're ruining a good man's reputation. Nah, 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 nah. He don't remember doing it. He said it's not his style. That's what I guarantee. That's what Brittany you is going to say. You do? I do not think that. I don't think that she's going to be that stupid. Yeah. <laughs> do you? So what, Real, so oh, my God. Kristen if she does bring. that. Oh, my God. Like, I, <sighs> then again, you're right, though. Kristen is messy, too. So we're going to find out. But we do see, like... Five minutes later, Zach going, I never said that. <laughs> That's the best part. He's in the kitchen and everybody else is outside. And he's like stormed off into the kitchen, but nobody has followed him into the kitchen. Yes. So he's just standing in there yelling, going, I never said that. I mean, he's still yelling, no his wig is yelling, him. everything is yelling. <laughs> it's all very loud yelling. Yes. Oh, gosh. And then uh, he's saying to Michelle, never, Michelle. I never, ever saw that, Michelle. I am a C-section. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> honestly, who knows what the fuck anybody on this show is talking about. I have no idea, but it's fun. Yeah, this show is way better than I ever expected. I can't believe, like, when, when the episode was over, I was like, oh, I'm hooked. I'm, like, ready for the next episode. I hate yeah. it. I hate everyone on this show. And uh, it's so good. So fun. Yeah, yeah. So fun. All right, everybody. Well, thanks so much for being with us today. We will be back. Go get tickets for our live shows over at watchwhatcrappens.com. Thanks for being here on Patreon video, everybody. Um, and uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. Love you guys. Bye. 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 Bye